Are you ready for next meeting? Uh, yes, I will be making the changes to the resolutions when we print them out and I sign off on them uh, to reflect the co-sponsors on the resolutions that were announced. Uh, other than that, I'm ready to go. Thank you very much. It's time to call this meeting to order. Clerk of the board, please call the roll. Fielder Bergen. Here. Fielder Estrada. Present. Fielder Garretson. Here. Fielder Hudak. Present. Fielder Jallo. Fielder Mirabella. Present. Fielder Williams. Vice Chairman Kowalski. Here. And Chairman Granados. Here. Chairman, you have seven fielders present. Clear the board, please lead us in the prayer and salute to the flag. Humbly we ask God, the giver of peace and the lover of charity, to give the entire family of nations true agreement with his will and to grant the light of his spirit on all who work for justice and peace. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clerk of the Board, please read the statement of compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act. The Chair wishes to announce that pursuant to the requirements of New Jersey statutes annotated Title 10, Chapter 4, Section 10 of the Open Public Meetings Act, adequate notice of this meeting of the Board of Chosen Freeholders of the County of the Union has been given by mailing the annual meeting schedule for the year 2018, along with periodic changes necessitated by circumstances to the newspapers circulating within the County of the Union who are designated to receive such notice. And by posting the annual meeting schedule for the year 2018 in the Administration Building, and further by filing the annual meeting schedule for the year 2018 with the office of the county clerk. Thank you very much. At this time, I ask for a motion to approve the communications. So moved. May I have a second? S second. Motion was made by Freeholder Mirabella, seconded by Vice Chair Kowalski. Clerk of the Board, please call the roll. Freeholder Bergen. Yes. Freeholder Estrada. Yes. Freeholder Garrison. Present. Yeah, I'm sorry, yes. Freeholder Hudak. Aye. Freeholder Mirabella. Aye. Vice Chairman Kowalski? Yes. And Chairman Granados? Aye. Chairman, you have seven votes in the affirmative. Thank you very much. Today we have an ordinance for introduction. Clerk of the Board, please read the ordinance by title. Sorry about that, Chairman. Ordinance number 794, 2018. Ordinance authorizing the guarantee by the County of Union, State of New Jersey, of payment of principal of and interest on the County Guaranteed Revenue Refunding Bonds Series 2018 Oakwood Plaza Elizabeth Project of the Union County Improvement Authority in aggregate principal amount not exceeding $22 million for the purpose of providing additional security in connection with the authority's issuance of such refunding bonds, consenting to such financing, and determining certain other matters in connection therewithin. Thank you very much. Fear the Bergen, would you please move ordinance 794-2018 for first reading introduction? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At this time, as chairman of the fiscal subcommittee, I would like to move ordinance number 794-2018 <coughs> for first reading. Authorize the clerk of the board to advertise same in accordance with the law, with the public hearing and final reading to be held July 12, 2018. Thank you, Aaron. May I have a second? Second. Motion was made by Freelder Bergen, seconded by Freelder Mirabella. Clerk of the Board, please call the roll. Freelder Bergen? Yes. Freelder Estrada? Yes. Freelder Garrison? Yes. Freelder Hudak? Aye. Freelder Mirabella? Aye. Vice Chairman Kowalski? Yes. And Chairman Granados? Aye. Chairman, you have seven votes in the affirmative. Thank you very much. The meeting is now open to the public for the purpose of commenting on resolutions being offered for adoption only. Kindly state your name and town of residence for the record and the resolution to which you're referring and adhere to the five minute time limit. Good evening, I'm Mama Meow. I'm with the uh, Cats of My Only Business. I'm from Union County. Uh, and what I'd like to say is that I'm on 20, uh, 2018 610. I wanna congratulate every one of you that you have seen the future that we need to do for our community cats. You see that the uh, wheel has been broken and that we are really not addressing the problem the correct way. I'm so proud of Chairman Sergio Granadas that saw the vision and all the members that I spoke to that see that we need to make a change for the cats. We need to trap them, we need to neuter them, spay them, we need to vaccinate them, we need to return them and manage them. And it's got to be done due to the fact we are having cats that are dying starving 
and multiplying, and we can't have it anymore. So thank you very much. I truly appreciate this, and this is going to be the future of working together to make a difference in Union County with the IC leaders here that are going to do something special. Now I'd like to say thank you in muito obrigado, muitas gracias, Jenkuye, Efarasto, Messi Beku, and in plain English, thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. All white cats that you are saving, they're voiceless. You have given them a voice tonight, and I'm very proud of you, and I appreciate it. And I always end my conversation, since cats are my business, meow, thanks to you. Love you all. Make sure you come back next week. I seven languages, come on, we gotta get around the applause for that. Anyone else? Come back next week now. <laughs> Good evening, Chair Granatis, ladies and gentlemen. Three whole board, Bruce Patterson, 325. Garb. Uh, I don't know, how, how do you say meow in Spanish, by the way? Meow. I think she might not. Oh, all right. <laughs> oh, anyway. uh, oh, by the way, Gar Garwood has 850 guns, by the way. That I actually asked about a month ago uh, to the chief. But anyway, uh, uh, some questions. Simple questions. Uh, page two, number 562 in the center. New Jersey job access reverse commute. Just somebody explain what reverse means? I, you know, that's a strange word. Uh, on page three, uh, number 572, uh, Rutgers Cooperative Extension is, is getting uh, 105,824. I'm just wondering what is that for? Somebody could answer that. On page four, uh, number 577 in the center there. There's a savings of 26479 and as a taxpayer, I always like to hear that. Uh, and, especially, and this is Garwood, by the way. So somehow you saved money on Garwood. I, I just wondered if somebody could explain what the savings was about. Um, number 578 right below that uh, is another savings of $682,000. And yes, you did talk about it uh, in the previous meeting. And thank you very much for saving money again. I understand about the tonnage savings. I'm just wondering. Uh, these, these are obviously county roads. Um, do you do anything with the curbs? You know, from what I understand over the years, uh, you don't touch the curbs, but uh, if that's the case, then, uh, you know, maybe you should start thinking about doing something with curbs. And uh, I guess that money, uh, somebody asked, uh, if it, is it going to go into further projects? And I would assume it's probably going into the running surplus total, it's just to confirm that that's true. Uh, page five. Uh, 583 near the top, the CSBG, Community Service Block Grant, uh, is increasing $222,000, but there's a total of 372, and I, I just wonder uh, who's getting all that money, if somebody could just list that. The uh, 584 right below it, Musial Group uh, is, and this isn't even construction, it's just design and construction management inspection, so uh, I mean it's just design uh, and construction management. County Clerk's Office, I understood uh, Joanne Rajapi explaining a little bit of it, but I'm just wondering, what is the rough total uh, project cost? Uh, this, is, this is just more or less overhead, let's say. So what's the rough total construction cost in addition to the 244? Um, 588 at the bottom. Uh, there's an explanation about some costs in that. Uh, just, I, I was listening to it, and it actually seems like we saved maybe $200,000. I guess, could somebody just confirm that. That was Mr. Yuska, I think. He, what a great guy he is. I recommend him for county manager. But anyway, uh, five, I think it was him. Number <laughs> 590 on page 6. Now this is BGIA, Acrisure. I, I could say a lot of stuff here, but I, I just, I just want to point out that uh, Freehold of Mirabella is also town manager over there at Scotch Plains, and he's been awarding contracts to Acrisure. And Acrisure has been donating to the freeholder campaign, so there's kind of like an incestuous relationship here, and what I'm getting at is probably freeholder Marabella should be uh, abstaining on that. Uh, number 594 on that, on that same page, that was about the beverage carts, uh, the additional cost for the beverage carts. I'm just wondering, I, are, we're getting some kind of revenues out of this, correct? Uh, somebody could confirm that. And 
That's it. Those are easy questions. Thank you very much. For number 562-583, uh, Deputy Director Dinsmore. Through you, Mr. Chairman, um, with regard to the acronym, acronym JARC, Job Access Reverse Commute, the reverse uh, means the, to assist in the last leg of a commute to work. So in the case of Union County, we utilize the funds for a Route 22 safety shuttle. The individuals mostly come in via um, New Jersey Transit bus. Some of them may drive to a location, but the shuttle assists them as pedestrians to get to one side of Route 22 to the other. So the reverse is really the last leg of a commute to work. Um, with regard to the resolution regarding uh, community service block grant, 12 organizations, nonprofits are funded with these funds. For the most part, these are emergency services. They do include employment and behavioral health, but the majority of the dollars go to homeless prevention and they are earmarked by the federal government for persons that fit the federal poverty guidelines. Thank you very much, Deputy Director. Reference to number 572, um, Director Karen Anzillo. Good evening to the Freeholder Board and Chairman. Uh, this is our annual Rutgers Cooperative Extension salary contract. You support the faculty and staff 25% uh, uh, of our salaries, and the rest are federal funds coming through the Farm Bill and through USDA and uh, the federal government. So this is a uh, relationship that happens year year in year out it's a great relationship can you just elaborate for the residents also on some of the programming that takes place oh sure we have um, three departments within Rutgers Cooperative Extension and those departments my department is family and community health sciences and we spend a lot of time in the health areas nutrition areas um, public health areas we're very involved with the Shaping Elizabeth project and also have some involvement with uh, the uh, new Plainfield project as well, the Healthier Plainfield project. Um, part of our, um, another department within Rutgers Cooperative Extension is agriculture and um, environmental. Uh, we have two uh, faculty members in that department. Madeline Donardo runs our Master Gardener program and Michelle uh, Backus runs our new environmental steward program where we train volunteers and they actually help the um, residents in Union County on everything from grass to trees to environmental projects, et cetera. And then 4-H is our youth development project and also our agent there is um, on the tree commission. He also has background in plant science and does a lot of uh, community gardens and uh, work with um, school gardens. So we are in a variety of um, educational uh, projects and areas. We also write grants to provide support for those projects. Thank you very much, Doug. For number 577, Director Graziano. Uh, thank you, Chairman, through you. This was a uh, traffic signal project, and again, this is a uh, unit bid um, pricing, and also uh, for unforeseen conditions, when you do traffic signals, you don't know what you're going to um, you know, get to under the ground. Fortunately, in this case, it was, uh, you, know, well, you know, we were able to save about twenty six, twenty seven thousand dollars $27,000 on this project, so we, you know, we didn't have to use that, and um, that will go back into the, into the capital account as well as the other one. Well, the 600000 goes back into a capital account for these types of projects. That's great. Specified. We're saving money for projects. Thank yes. you very much, Director. Absolutely. Um, reference to 588, uh, Director Yeska. And as Director Yeska comes up, in reference to number 594, yes, we do receive revenue. Um, on 588, uh, there was a mention of savings, and it, uh, what it came down to was from the last contract. Um, we saved, uh, we will save in fees going forward for the next three years, $281,000 a year for a total of $843,000 over the three years. Thank you very much, Director. Anyone else from the public? Any comments on resolutions? Seeing no one else, I'll formally close this portion of the meeting. 
May I have a motion to adopt resolutions 2018-560 through 2018-611. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. The motion was made by Freeholder Mirabella, seconded by Freeholder Garrison. Clerk of the board, please call the roll. Freeholder Bergen. Abstain on resolutions 2018-569 and 2018-583. Yes to the remainder. Freeholder Estrada. Yes. Freeholder Garretson? Yes. Freeholder Hudak? Aye. Freeholder Mirabella? Aye. Vice Chairman Kowalski? Yes. And Chairman Granados? Abstain on 2018-594, aye to the rest. Okay. Chairman, you have seven votes in the affirmative with the exception of uh, three resolutions. Resolutions 569, uh, resolution 2018-583, and resolution 594, where in each instance you have six votes in the affirmative with one abstention. Thank you very much. At this time, I'd like to open the meeting to the public for the purpose of commenting on any governmental issue that a member of the public feels may be of concern to the residents of the county. Kindly state your name and town of residence for the record and adhere to the five-minute time limit. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and the board. Uh, Brandon Bernier from Roselle. Um, it's been a while. I'm glad to be back. Uh, I'm actually here to discuss some traffic issues, not in Roselle exactly, but Roselle Park. Um, that I deal with on a daily basis in my commute. Um, on Locust and Westfield Ave, um, there's a, a need for years now for the lanes, the left turn only lanes on Locust to have a left turn only light. Um, it, it's nearly impossible for anyone who goes through that area um, to get, to, to make those left turns onto Westfield Ave um, at, at, at the majority of times of day, but especially during rush hour. Uh, most of the times when I'm coming home on Westfield Ave, uh, the traffic on Locust backs up all the way across Westfield Ave to the point that the light turns green on Westfield Ave and there are still three, four cars, you know, out in the middle of the road. So um, that's an area, hopefully, uh, that you can look into. The two lanes on Locust are already there for the left turn only. Really what it would require is the addition to the light to have the left turn only um, added on there and then obviously timing changes down the line, whatever needs to happen, but um, there, there's a definitive backup there and you know whether that can be alleviated in some way moving into Roselle, that light at first Ave in Roselle and Locust, um, but there's a definite problem there. Traffic backs up all the way down Locust into Roselle Park um, and I think there's something that can be done to alleviate that. So if you can have someone look into that, that'd be, uh, that'd be great. And also a little further down Westfield Ave at Linden Road, um, for the majority of my life, there's a, there's a left turn only light and lane there um, turning into Roselle um, coming from Elizabeth, technically you're in Roselle Park at that point. Um, but the left turn only light on li turning onto Linden Road there um, has always been far too short. Um, cars back up there time after time. There's never enough time for the cars that are backed up there to make the turn. I think um, if, if someone looked into that, it would make a lot of sense to just extend the time that that green left turn only light is on um, and, and I think that would alleviate a, a bit of a traffic problem there as well. Um, so those are the two issues I had while I was here. I noticed you had the uh, $15,000 sponsorship for Roselle's uh, House Music Festival. I did want to thank the board um, for approving that. Um, then also while I was sitting here, something completely you know, kind of petty that I noticed um, for, for, for a county that's you know, as progressive as any in the state I'm sitting here noticing our vice chairwoman, uh, and it says vice chairman uh, on everything. Um, I don't know if that's something in the bylaws, something um, wh wherever that comes from, that it's you know on the titles in the in the documents. Um, when I was in uh, my college's senate, actually, we completely rewrote our bylaws to be gender neutral. Um, it was something the majority of students at our our university demanded from us, uh, so that you know that that insistence on chairman wasn't there, we changed it to chairperson, but um, it was just something I was sitting here noticing. Uh, our board's very likely soon to be a majority female, um, so I think it's something to think about. Um, so if, thank if you. If you wouldn't mind, Vice Chairman, I'll, I'll respond on that. It, it actually was my choice okay. to go with Vice Chair or Vice Chairman. For instance, this sign, uh, it doesn't really matter that much to me. And it, chair or chairman or chairwoman, but um, whoever comes into the post 
can, can make a choice about it. So okay, it's not imposed on anyone. Thanks for, thanks for answering. Thanks and for paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> and just in reference to Locust Street and Westfield Avenue, that is a state intersection. But I know our engineer and Director Graziano are writing notes and they'll pass along the information to the state so they can possibly look into. You're welcome. Good evening, freeholders. Anthony Esposito, Roselle. Uh, I want to touch a little bit about politics here in Union County. Um, Union County has a long tradition of pay to play. Uh, we see it in the ELEX that we search on, and we see the people that make donations to political parties, to people running for office. Those people are usually the ones that get the contracts. And it's really not fair to the citizens how that is done. I, I would love to see this freeholder board create policies that addresses pay to play. If a person or an entity donates more than $1,500 to any campaign, they should be excluded from taking work within the freeholders board, within the county. It's, it's, it's something that's very real, and I know that all of you are quite aware of it, because it's the way things have been done for many years. And it's my belief it's not fair to the electorate. Because it should be based on the best performance at the best price, period. That's all it should be. But I understand how people wind up in situations maybe personal situations, maybe <coughs> political situations on how and why we make our choices. But I, I would hope that the freeholder board itself recognizes that it's really not the right thing to do. And to make policies to really try and control it, because we all know it's real. We can see it. There's, it's documented. For example, Acrisure. That company makes a lot of donations to all, mm -hmm. to many, many politicians in many, many towns. And they get a lot of contracts from many, many towns. Now, ask yourselves, is that fair? Because it seems like if you make the donation, it's a shoe in And the bigger donation to, to whatever political party or candidates, committees, the better your chances of getting the job. But how about limiting limiting those donations to a thousand dollars might get more donations from a lot of different places and then they could all bid like it's supposed to be and it would be more fair and equitable to the people so I'm just asking and suggesting that some policies are created by this freeholder board to control Pay to play. Thank you. Thank you for your opinion. We greatly appreciate it. Anyone else from the public wishing to comment? Yeah. Hi. Hi, everybody. My name is Brian. I just some background. I am. Your address also, please. 
huh? kind of residence? Uh, Elizabeth, New Jersey. So I'm a cross country runner. So I see around me. I run for C and O University Athletic Scholarship, and I see around me a lot of like, a lot of people aren't really paying attention to like their health. A lot of people, you know, we have people driving and whatnot, and uh, we're not as active as like other other countries or you know just in general. Like I feel like we could do more in terms of like I like Warren Echo Park. I like the park systems we have, but I was looking at like the rail, the the disused like rails. Um, the train, like the train railroads that we have, like there is a, there's an abandoned one that stems from Elizabeth train station, the current one. And I just wonder like if there's anything that could be done to like perhaps restore it for like a rail to trail type system that we see like in uh, like New Brunswick or something like that, like where we can make it a trail or like, convert it to something that could be useful for um, the community, for, for people to bike and run along. And it's just something I looked at as a runner and I'm like, I mean, this is really, kind of deteriorate, this, this, this railroad is deteriorating. Um, you know, like, I'm not sure if you guys know which one I'm talking about, but there's one that like, stems from, uh, like, along a parallel to Westfield Avenue to Elizabeth, pretty much. And, I mean, I don't see any use for it. I mean, I've, I think it's, like, it's just, it's just there. And I was wondering uh, who I could talk to, who, I don't know if you guys, if this is a state or the county that could possibly modify it or, you know, make, or what type of project could be done to maybe, um, make it a railroad trail, like as we see in other communities, like uh, in Delaware Raritan Trail or the Columbia Trail. And I forgot the township, I think. I, I forgot, but I don't know if you guys have heard of it. Um, but yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. Um, we'll put you in contact with our legislative director, Lisa Bullock, who can uh, get your information and make sure you get put in contact with the right individuals to move forward your idea about healthy. Lisa? Right there. Okay. Hi, Lisa. And is, Vice Chair Plaza? Is, so Maybe you're talking about the Lehigh Valley rail that yeah. hasn't been used and it goes along South Avenue, which becomes First Avenue and Roselle and then yeah. goes, okay. yes. it goes over to Staten Island. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It could be also There's the Penn Central Railroad too. Oh, okay. Penn the the, the Central, Central Railroad that was like, it was like established in 1893, is that the one? Right. That was, yeah. Well, there, there is plenty of there's, lines. There's that, plenty, yeah. Right, but okay. they, the, the mere fact they're not being used not, does not necessarily mean they're not necessarily have ownership. That's part mm -hmm. of also of uh, Conrail actually mm -hmm. own those lines. It's mm -hmm. not, we don't even own the property. Okay. Uh, we have, for example, a trail that is being right now worked on in uh, Westfield. Uh, also, Roselle Park has one right next to uh, the train right now and that, that you can actually run through uh, the city of, uh, if you come up from um, Galloping Hill Road, right underneath the, the, uh, the train processes, to the left, you'll see it, there's a track there that people run on that was made for that purpose to put asphalt down. Uh, but this is not a new concept, it's a concept that's out there. Mm -hmm. uh, many of these lines could be, uh, even though they're inactive, but they're there are lines that have not been designated for anything else other than railroads. So uh, it's something that, that I'm, I'm sure we can help you try to find out which of those actors are not. Yeah, and just another note, if you look for East Coast Greenway on yes. the internet, okay, so they are pretty good about telling you what kind of open spaces are available for running, so just just another resource. Yeah. I'm very familiar with that. I, I okay. I've learned that a lot. But uh, thank you, guys. And thank you for your comments. And thank you for your time. No problem. Anyone else from the public wish on commenting? Good evening, Chair Granada, ladies and gentlemen. The freeholder board, Bruce Patterson, Garwood, I think Summit, right? Isn't Summit doing something with the rail yeah, line? that's what I was saying. Yeah. Oh, you mentioned Westfield. It maybe oh, I mean, I mean, yeah, you meant I Summit. Summit. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and the Staten Island line and and the Rawway Valley, whatever, the Raritan Valley or Rawway Valley that goes through Kenilworth. Yeah, there's a lot of lines that, that he, makes, he makes sense. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'm, I'm talking here about Garwood taxes. Uh, I, I saw our number, I saw her number that came out of the county about what Garwood's going to be hit with, and it's an increase of $205,000, and that's an average of about $141 a house in Garwood because we're a small town and that's an increase of on our taxes of 5.5 percent and this is the Union County government tax. Uh, that's that what I got major issues because I've been I've been paying attention to numbers and I can't see for the life of me and I told this to the ca council and I think they're sending a letter to you guys or the tax board to, for an explanation of why our taxes are going up 5.5 percent 
And I was looking at some numbers, and uh, I see our, our, our net valuation taxable numbers that you calculate uh, the ta tax on. Basically, it was flat for the past three, four years, and then it actually had a decrease in valuation of 1.4%. So our valuation went down. In the county budget, you guys have been talking about rateables going up for the last couple of years in the county overall of 2.5%, 2.7%. This past year was 3.26%. So your rateables are going up. Our rateables went down, sadly, but anyway, and yet our taxes are still going up. Something doesn't make sense there. Another, another issue that I have, and I'm, I'm explaining this to you, and hopefully uh, if there is a meeting at, at our council, I'm going to bring this up again. But, but you guys raised taxes $6.2 million, which is 1.75% of the county. And your rateables actually, again, went up 3.26%. So if the rateables went up over 3% and your taxes only went up like 1.75%, it sure sounds like the taxes should have went down about 1.5%, even with the rolling average that has to be figured in. Another point, I had brought up this back with the budget discussion, uh, the county surplus. The county surplus from 2017 to 2018 actually went up $23 million. Your tax increase of $6.2 million on the residents is dwarfed by that increase. And so I see no reason why you should be raising taxes at all since you, you have a huge surplus increase from last year to this year. And that surplus, of course, is basically non-essential and non-operational cost monies. So there should be no reason why you're increasing taxes on any of the towns. I'm, I'm going to Oprah, I guess I'll Oprah the methodology and, and the lists of whatever goes into making the county tax sausage, because something is wrong here. Something is flawed. The operation is flawed. The methodology seems to be flawed. Garwood is, is getting, I guess, to be pleasant, you know, shafted. So. Yeah. That's, that's my talk on the taxes. Another thing is uh, I watched the uh, Holly Shapizzi, Mary Mayor Al Smith, yeah. Scotch Plains discussion on affordable housing. Uh, she really makes a lot of sense. Um, in there, they talked about, this is Scotch Plains, 2,500 units they owe, which is going to increase the number of units in Scotch Plains by 35% based on this affordable housing, which is actually a small amount, but yet all these market rates are going to jack up the total units to 2,600. The population is going to increase by about 22%. Uh, Freeholder Mayor Bella, who's a township manager there, he, he was at the meeting, so he knows exactly what I'm talking about. Somebody actually reached out to uh, township manager Mayor Bella and, and actually said, do something for us. Now you're sitting as a freeholder, through you, Chair Granada, to uh, Freeholder Mayor Bella. He's sitting as a freeholder. Please, we, we really need something done here. Uh, this area is getting slammed with too many units. Uh, I drive, somebody mentioned traffic, I drive Lake Avenue, Martine Park, which is a, basically a straight run through Scotch Plains Fanwood. And I'll tell you, at 6.30 p.m., it's like solid cars, all the way from Lake Avenue all the way into Scotch Plains. Anybody who drives that road knows that. The traffic is solid. There's a couple of breaks, yes, but, but we're talking solid traffic, and yet we're going to be putting thousands and thousands and thousands of more units. Holly Shapizzi is an assemblywoman. She, she gives Thank you for your comments. Appreciate it. I suggest you seriously think about this because the whole area is getting slammed. Thank you very much. Any other questions or comments from the public? Seeing no one else, I'll formally close that portion of the meeting and move on to freeholder reports with freeholder Garrison. Thank you, Chairman. This evening, I'm very pleased that we had the Union County Moms Demand Action. I thought it was a very thoughtful presentation on safe guns. Um, I also want to um, share with the Freeholder Board that today the chairman and I were able to celebrate the birthday of a 95-year-old woman um, in Hillside, and it was delightful. Um, so if we ever get a chance to do that, I think we can continue because it's something that, again, their lives are um, so unique and share so much with us. This past weekend, the county supported a Juneteenth event. Um, it's the date, June 19, 1865, the official word that slavery ended. 
The people of Texas actually didn't know it until two years after President Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation. I would highly recommend that the freeholder board that we look to try to make that something countywide and not just support an event, but maybe consider doing an event. Um, it's such a wonderful holiday, and I think it would be something truly beneficial to so many of the residents in the county. I'd also like to acknowledge um, the, the terrible week that we've had. There was the incident with guns, obviously, in um, the southern part of our state, but also as we think about what's going on nationally, and I'm very, very glad that our representatives in Congress and the many voices all around the nation have demanded an immediate and permanent end to many of the policies that are negatively impacting immigrant families. Um, it's just been something that has really been very, very um, hurtful um, to my heart as we see so many families that have been torn apart. But I'm very pleased that although this has taken some time, but that there's been some immediate action. But with that, we need to continue to fight and stand with the anti-immigrant policy um, organizations and individuals who are truly trying to make sure that the families are not divided. This is not human. Um, on a lighter note, I'd like to just acknowledge that these summer concert series are coming up. Um, and as we think about all these negative things happening, it's very positive to see that this county is continuing to do things to bring families together. So we know that starting tomorrow evening on June 22nd, the Summer Arts Series is happening. So I do encourage everyone to come out, look at all of the different activities, whether the Summer Arts, there's activities that are gonna be in um, Echo Lake, Oak Ridge Park, and some other activities, but we have a listing on our website. So again, as we think about the things that are happening in our society, we have to also try to continue to keep people together. And I'm glad to see the representative from the Rutgers Extension tonight, um, her one pager that was shared also. It just, again, continues to do outreach in the community. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you much, Frioda. Frioda Berger. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to uh, thank Fr Freeholder Garretson for her comments on the uh, immigrant families, and I join with her uh, in her sentiments on that. Um, for Mr. Patterson, I wanted to note that the uh, recycling grants that were given out tonight were not matching grants. Uh, they were just outright grants to the municipalities. I know that will make him happy. Um, I was going to make some comments to Mr. Esposito, but uh, after making his comments, he didn't see fit to stay around long enough to hear a response from the board. Um, suffice to say that this uh, board, this county, has and will always comply with the law uh, concerning the issues he raised. And I'm not going to go into any more detail because um, he's not here to hear them. Um, just briefly, uh, Mr. Patterson mentioned the, the um, tax rates and, and even though the county overall tax rate is only 1.75, that Garwoods went up uh, greater than that, um, I, I would let Mr. Patterson know that that's not a formula that this board creates, calculates, or has anything to do with. Um, we, we enact our budget, we set an overall uh, tax rate, uh, and then it, it's basically the state of New Jersey's formula that determines how that increase is affected in each municipality. Um, so you're, you're free to find out any formulas you want, but unfortunately we have, we have absolutely no, no more control over that than, than you do. Um, I'll just say, again, you and I disagree on the issue of the surplus, and I think this board is doing the fiscally prudent thing by uh, having our sur surplus at the level it is. And, uh, Again, because it's an area I'm very familiar with, you talked about affordable housing. Um, in, my, in my humble opinion, the problem we're having now is a result of the inactivity of Governor Christie for eight years and his refusal to appoint or empower the Council on Affordable Housing, which forced the courts of the state of New Jersey to take control of that issue. Um, which has had a potentially negative effect on many of our municipalities. I, uh, I agree with your conclusion, but, but I place the cause squarely on the shoulders of our former governor. Um, recycling, we talked about a lot today, so I'm 
happy to be able to announce that our next countywide recycling event will be a week from Saturday, that's June 30th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at our County Vocational Technical School campus on Raritan Road in Plainfield, and this will be an electronics recycling event. Uh, this is one of our most popular. It's an opportunity to recycle your uh, old televisions, computers, monitors, printers, laptops, fax machines, DVD and CD players, tablets, e-readers, almost any kind of electronic equipment. Uh, very hard to get rid of, but this is an opportunity to take it out of the waste stream. Um, these items all contain heavy metals and other toxic substances, so it is very important that we recycle them. Um, I would note there's a limit of six items per car, and if you need more information, certainly go to our website, ucnj.org slash recycle, and you can find information there for all of our recycling events across the year. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you much, Friolder. Friolder Estrada. Thank you very much to the Chair. Uh, number one, I'd like to uh, thank my colleague, uh, Angela Garrison, for her comments. Uh, I totally agree with them. Uh, there is one uh, lighter, not lighter note, but a more difficult situation that will take place is the fact is that even though the President had signed some kind of a um, document uh, indicating the stopping of this particular issue, um, it is now known that the possibility of joining parents and children is going to be very impossible. The number varies from 2,000 plus to anywhere between five to 6,000 uh, kids that have been uh, removed from their parents down in the southern border. Um, you know, it's interesting, um, the, the events that are taking place, and I'm sure that there'll be plenty of challenges, but apparently some of the uh, legal ramification only allow for a 20-day uh, time period, which will mean that uh, we're going to be facing the same problems uh, very shortly unless they take some really aggressive actions to resolve that. Um, so we'll be looking closer to see what, uh, what will be taking place. Uh, I want to take the time to thank the uh, Parks uh, Group. Uh, I visited Ros uh, Ro uh, uh, Rosudo Park here in Elizabeth, and uh, I tell you I was impressed of the magnitude of the job they have accomplished in terms of cleaning out. I know that the chair had been involved with that a few weeks back, and uh, it's progressing very, very well. The next issue we have to do is we have to find a way ahead how to secure many of the trees that are close to the, uh, the river line, which uh, the roots are exposed, and potentially those roots and trees can eventually uh, come down. So the erosion there has to be handled somehow, and I know that they have it in their, um, in their project, so hopefully that will get taken care of, but it, it does look, I would say, a thousand percent differently than it was, let's say, a month ago. Um, just one item in terms of the recycling, and I know today we gave the recycling plants, but we will be challenged as a community in the future since China has decided not to accept any more American uh, recycling uh, types, uh, which means is that when we we're sending the majority of our plastics, it's no longer going to be available. Therefore, I know that they have made some changes in moving some of the plastic toward India the reality is that we as a community must do a better job in handling our recyclables and at the same time uh, finding sources that can actually use this particular uh, items here at home and that's something that's very critical. I know that there is a percentage that gets used here but still the technology and the use has not been developed uh, uh, properly enough to do that so hopefully we'll find some solutions for the future. Thank you very much, and I conclude my comments, Mr. Thank Chairman. Thank you very much. Friolder, Friolder Hudak. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I also want to thank the mayors and uh, municipal officials who were here today to accept a recycling enhancement grant. Uh, yeah, my kudos to Director Graziano and to Joanne Giamendum, who's not here to uh, have me tease her again, but she does <laughs> a, a fantastic job in terms of coordinating our recycling efforts in the county. Um, you know, earlier this year we launched the Recycling Coach app, which helps residents stay up to date with 
local and countywide recycling schedules and provides discounts for composting bins, for recycling food and garden waste, and many other things. Um, I know Mayor DeLuca, during his presentation, mentioned the app, so it is getting out there. Um, and to echo Freeholder Estrada's comments, um, in terms of the waste stream, you know, we have to be more conscious of what we are throwing away and, and the impact it could possibly have. So um, um, job well done by those municipalities that are participating in the grant. And if they're not participating, um, looking to enhance recycle and free cycle um, activities within in their uh, communities. Um, I wanted to note um, I had the pleasure of joining our, our colleague, many of the colleagues on this board um, at the Union County Pride Day uh, in Rawway this past weekend. It was a beautiful day. Uh, it was a great event. Um, also, was very heartened to notice how full the pool was because um, it was a very warm Saturday and very warm and beautiful weekend and good to see that that facility is already rocking and rolling this summer. Um, to uh, just wanted to bring an update that the construction at Wheeler Park and the spray park that is going to be at that f particular park is is underway. A couple delays uh, construction wise, and then a, a very unforgiving winter uh, has delayed that particular project a bit. But I know it's it's back on track and moving forward. I went by the other day. Um, finally, I just wanted to also um, you know note. Uh, the resolution regarding the separation of families uh, at the U.S. border. And I wanted to thank um, all of my colleagues for joining in on, on that particular resolution. Um, you know, the, the, as sitting as a freeholder for the past um, seven years has been in education, this is one of the areas that I've, I've really learned a bit more about. Um, I know there was a time where we actually did, we housed um, juveniles who were part of the immigration system who were, who were in the correction system and that was a relationship uh, this board chose to end three years ago. Um, and at the time I remember having a conversation, I think it was with um, then director Frank Guzzo and we were talking about the, the individuals who were housed in that particular facility. and. You know, we were assured that you know these were individuals who were in the criminal justice system. They belonged in a juvenile detention center, um, but there was always the chance that they could, uh, the federal government could turn around and decide to bring other minors into that particular facility. It never came to be, um, and we left that relationship. But that's something to bear in mind, uh, as over 2,000 children have been separated from their families and dispersed. Uh, you know, families just ripped apart, parents sent back uh, to their, their countries of origin. It's, 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 um, it's disgraceful. It's not in the character of the greatest country uh, in the world. And um, it's, it's a very sad period in our country. And um, I, I, I watched on CNN on Sunday as, as members of the New Jersey congressional delegation were turned away at the juvenile detention facility, at the facility, the, um, the ICE facility in Elizabeth, as they, they wanted to come in and speak to the management there and see what was going on. Um, I know uh, it turns out some of the, the young people have been you know, brought to other states, and including New York. I'm not sure if they've documented New Jersey. And this is a story uh, that has not been fully explained. Um, the, the resolution that we did tonight, um, started with uh, a conversation I had with my daughter last Friday. Uh, she had had her last day of school. I picked her up a little early, um, and I thought we were going to have a very happy conversation. And the conversation was, Daddy, can, you be, can I be taken away from you? That was my conversation with my seven-year-old. That is disgraceful. And that is where we are in 2018 under this administration. Um, I, I, I don't have much more to add to that, but I, I, I will not be supporting any initiative um, that supports this sort of hatred towards um, you know, fellow human beings. 
Um, we, we are a country of laws, and we are, this is a country of opportunity. Um, and we've, we've seen it. We, we were, I believe Union County was put on a naughty list um, with the Department of Justice, with ICE, a few years, uh, about a year ago, because we are refusing to detain uh, residents of Union County in our jail without a proper warrant. Um, this is, this, we've seen this, we saw this with the, the visa issue, we've seen this um, with white nationalist riots in, in Virginia, we've seen it with this. This is not, this is this, this, this is just the worst that we've seen, uh, but it will not be the last that we've seen. And that's sad, and I think as residents we need to be vigilant and, uh, and do our part. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you for your other, for your other Mayor Bella. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I uh, want to um, thank Friel de Hudak for those um, very poignant words and certainly the, uh, the um, comments from his daughter hit home directly and um, I think he um, communicated very well the feelings that I have and I uh, want to thank you, Friel, for taking the time to articulate that so well. Uh, Following up on Freelda Garrettson um, talking about the um, programs for the summer, uh, tomorrow night, I don't know if Freeholder went into um, detail, but the New Jersey Symphony Orchestra will be playing in Echo Lake Park. And this is a real sh a special treat for us here in Union <coughs> County and uh, for people of, of the whole area to come out and enjoy a free concert. Tomorrow night at Echo Lake uh, Park starts at 7.30 uh, and kicks off our summer art series. Uh, along with the concerts that will be in the, the first part of the summer at Echo Lake Park and then switching to Oak Ridge Park, uh, we have free movies through Family Flicks and a lot of activities like yoga and fitness activities for the children. Uh, please also look at the website uh, for activities at the uh, Trailside Nature and Science Center and the Warnaco Sports Center in Warnaco Park. There's so much going on activity-wise and entertainment-wise for our residents, and uh, I'm happy to be a part of a board that uh, puts value on the arts and um, makes sure we have opportunity for, um, for our residents. Uh, I want to just um, add a little bit more to Freeholder Hudak's comments on the Pride Family event uh, last Saturday. Uh, I continue to be proud of this freeholder board uh, living in this county and supporting such progressive equality for all residents, uh, particularly those of the LGBTQ uh, community. And I want to thank Danny Newberry, who is part of Chairman Granatis's uh, first in the state of New Jersey, uh, her, her leadership at the LGBTQ office. Uh, Laura Scatari and all the county residents um, who came out that day to celebrate Pride and to have a family event. Uh, there's a lot of Pride events throughout uh, the state and throughout the country, New York City and Asbury Park, and not all of them are for families. Um, and people choose to celebrate how they celebrate, and that's wonderful. We chose specifically to have a family Pride event for. Uh, little kids up to senior citizens, and it was a wonderful day. I was very proud to be a part of it. Uh, my whole family was there, and we had a good time. Uh, the night before, continuing on a weekend of Pride activity, uh, Chairman Granados joined me at the first LGBTQ prom uh, that we had at Hamilton Stage for um, students who um, wanted to celebrate a prom in a comfortable, safe environment, and, and they had a wonderful time, and and I think that is the kind of event that I was proud to be a part of that we will then um, see grow in the future. Uh, the Arts Center staff did a wonderful job partnering with the county to provide a great event for our uh, students that came out to, to do that. And finally, Mr. Chairman, uh, just today I went to see uh, a Kids Dig um, opening of two new beds at the Jewish Community Center in Scotch Plains. Uh, chairman, part of your initiative, I think, from last year and moving uh, forward to this year. But just to see the kids uh, participating and planting and understanding nature and, and how things grow and work, and these were little kindergarten kids, uh, was, was great to see for me. And uh, that initiative continues to um, bear fruit, shall I say? <laughs> uh, but it's, uh, it's wonderful. It's, it was terrific for me to be there and share a couple of minutes with the with the children, and uh, I look forward to, to more of those openings throughout our county. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Chris.
County Council? No comments, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Deputy County Manager? No comments. Thank you. Vice Chair? Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I want to remind people that uh, the farmer's market vouchers are still available for, for eligible seniors, and uh, you can apply um, if you go to one of the uh, one of the voucher events, the first one is on Monday, June 25th at the Liberty Square Senior Center in Elizabeth. We've added a new date on Wednesday, July 13th at the Warrenanko Sports Center in Warrenanko Park. And we'll continue to, to distribute the vouchers on a semi-weekly basis at various locations throughout the county until July 25th. So these vouchers are for a $25 total. They're for income eligible seniors and they can be used at any farmer's market that displays the black and yellow WIC sign. So you can call our Union County Department of Human Services Division on Aging toll free at 888-280-8226 or go to our website and look for uh, the farmer's market vouchers there. Um, I'd also like to, um, to uh, thank ch the chairman for uh, the Kids Dig In initiative. Um, uh, I've had, well, I, most of us have had the pleasure of, uh, of going to one of these events where, you know, some of these kids have never, they, they live in apartments, they never have seen a vegetable growing on a vine and it's such a thrill to see them get, get into the planters get their their hands dirty and and then see uh, what grows and uh, so thanks thanks to you chairman and uh, my colleagues and the open space staff and and also let me mention here that um, our uh, our legislative aides um, have been doing a great job of covering these and all our events I, I just wanted to thank them before we get too far into the summer because uh, yes <laughs> Yeah. Angelica Cedeno, Nico Mitkaloudis, and Ryan Vasquez uh, and working with the uh, very capable Miss Lisa Bullock. So thanks to all of you, and uh, I know uh, uh, we all enjoy having you back us up. And if, whatever event I go to, whoever, whichever of you was assigned, you've been doing a great job. So. You missed it, Nico. <laughs> no, that's okay. Oh, she didn't mention Nico, don't worry about it. Nico, you're part of the group, don't worry about it. You can go back out. Um, I also want to thank Moms Demand Action uh, and hope that uh, people will, uh, will get in touch with them and share the information. That's, that's such an important message, gun safety. And finally, uh, congratulations to all the graduating students. Um, uh, Frielder Mirabella mentioned Roselle Park. I know Cranford had a graduation tonight. I think Plainfield as well and a number of other schools. And just want to wish all the, the graduating students success uh, as they move on to college and their futures. And uh, wish all of the other students a happy summer. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much, Vice Chair. I just also, when we're talking about the different uh, garden grants, I want to acknowledge Vicki Drake and her staff along with Tina Case, who's in charge of the Union County Means Green for all their hard work. I know this Freeholder Board appreciates everything you're doing. And also one of the great things about this grant is that 30% of the produce grown from these various gardens go back to local food pantries and um, local sh shelters. And last year alone, I believe it was over 200 pounds of produce were donated back to people in need across this county. And it's because of the for uh, foresight of this Freeholder Board and knowing that they have to give back to the community and knowing that we're here to help out other individuals. Was well, this able to come to fruition? So I just want to thank my three other colleagues for making sure this came to light. And with that said, may I ask for a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.